Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Trustee Horn? Here. Trustee Grazik? Trustee Wilson? Present. Trustee Udris? Present. Thank you, Denisha. With no fur without any further ado, which is please come forward and see if we can uh, get enough information we can wrap this up tonight. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, I'm Farhad Zareen, Principal of Ginkgo Planning and Design. And Hi, I'm Perry Georgopoulos, Senior Associate, Ginkgo Planning and Design. Mm -hmm. So we are very delighted to yes. be here in, um, in the pandemic and so glad to see all of you doing well. So again, thank you for making time for us for this special meeting. We're going to do a quick uh, overview very quickly. You've seen the plan uh, in the many months that we've developed a bit with you and then we'll open it up for questions. And we really look forward to kind of hopefully getting the plan uh, moved forward today. So um, if you've seen the final document, it's a hefty document. It's a comprehensive plan, so it's got a lot of stuff in it. So tonight we are just going to uh, go through some of the highlights. We are really delighted. Uh, we hope that you all feel this is your, it captured your vision. The plan, as you know, is branded your vision for your hometown. And page down. Uh, so one of the things we wanted to make sure you remember, this was, this was crafted with all of you, and we all felt that the community really responded to this idea that this is Moni's time, uh, and it really was the right time to write the next chapter of Moni with everyone together. Uh, just a reminder of the process, this, was, uh, this started last spring, and it is a project that was funded by the Chicago Metropolitan a Area uh, for Pla Agency for Planning. And we did three public forums. We did extensive phone call interviews. Uh, we did a lot of steering committee uh, meetings, staff meetings, and we really thank everyone for all the time you've given. If you've looked at the plan, at the end, there's a very robust appendix with all the surveys. We are very delighted. Over 100 people took the survey. They continue to give us uh, feedback, very positive feedback through many emails. And you, can, you have a record of all of that, uh, all the things that the community uh, wanted, and we hope that the plan reflects that. Um, we're not going to read all this text, but just a reminder, what, it, what, we are try what we tried to do was this plan is very, hopefully, very implementable. It's not very hefty on policy. So that there were 10 goals that were identified with community feedback. And we've organized the book by these simple 10 goals. So it allows you to just hit each one of them and hopefully in the coming years continue to implement uh, the plan. So we're going to very quickly walk you through the kind of basic 10, the kind of crux of these 10 big goals. The first one is, of course, about land use. And the goal was a simple goal to preserve the hometown feel of your village. And Moni is, is as we've said many times, is very different from every other built up suburb that you have all around. It has a lot of natural land, farmland all around, a very quiet feel. So for that, uh, the what we do, do is look at both existing land uses that you see up there. As you can see, most of the planning area is pale green, which means it's mostly farmland. In yellow, you see where the existing residential areas are. In purple, you see where you have existing manufacturing and industrial uses. And at the bottom uh, right corner, you see the big pink and the blue uh, areas. These are both areas that are within the future boundary for the airport. So we looked at this larger planning area. And in the, in the final document, you'll see there's a ton of demographic info. Over here, we're just showing you one slide. You, you'll see there's a lot of age projections and income projections based on 
both county, local, and kind of regional uh, data. But the one that's always important to really look at uh, is median age. And we've talked about this a lot through the process that everywhere we are working in the region, we are seeing the median age in suburbs really start to rise. And you can see Moni is already at like 41 years. In other places, we are seeing it go up to higher 40s. All that means is that every suburb, which is, has been traditionally really about families and single family homes, and that is always what suburbs are going to be about, but now we are seeing kind of a demand for some housing type that can you know, serve empty nesters, seniors who want to stay within the community and maybe don't have children. So this is kind of a trend we are seeing everywhere that people really want to ha live in more walkable areas when they're a bit older. So this is the kind of heart of the comprehensive plan. We have spent a lot of time with all of you developing this just to kind of run through the big items here for the future land use map. And as you can see, the future land use map looks at an area much bigger than what's incorporated Moni today. So in yellow, you see kind of the uh, con continuation of existing residential where we are right now, where your historic homes are, and really this idea of keeping your neighborhoods close to where you're incorporated, where your schools are, where you've made your investments, and really con continuing to keep the village in the near term very compact. In purple, you see where we are showing future uh, industrial and warehousing uses really all along uh, I-57 and really not going into your neighborhoods uh, in either direction. Then in the green in the bottom left corner, one of the big contributions this plan makes is puts all of that in uh, an agricultural land use, which means in the near term, there's really no reason to start allowing subdivisions to come here and there where you have no infrastructure. The market isn't there anyways, but this is the right time to really conserve some agricultural land. And to the north, you see the paler yellow. This is really in keeping with the conservation kind of larger lot uh, residential patterns that you have already have there that Green Garden Township has as well as Frankfurt has to the north. So this is a simple land use approach that was very well uh, received by the community and we feel it really captures this idea of uh, keeping the small town feel for money. The next one was the big one this idea of creating a town center where the community of Muni can gather high, really high support for, uh, you know, the great initiatives that the village already took in acquiring a key piece of land that was, that is hugely helpful in creating this town center. But as you know, we created a vision with uh, everyone's input and very strong feedback on simple things like it has to be mixed use. We want shops, we want cafes, we want places to live. We want it to be walkable, we want open spaces, public plazas, and municipal, uh, municipal facilities, whether it's a village hall or something else, but the idea that there's a municipal presence there. So this is the conceptual plan that we showed in public forums. Uh, we had our board and models here. We've had um, extremely positive support uh, on this. Again, for all of you to know, this is a concept plan. As you move forward, things will change. What we hope when we do these plans, and we actually typically carry it through the next phases also, what really sh doesn't change are the basic principles. While the detention shape might be different and you might have a different kind of municipal facility in a different location, the principles don't change. And the principles are always about creating, again, walkable streets, very pedestrian friendly, bike friendly, having an open space as a village square, as a focal point, and making sure that parking is ample, but parking is shared. And the general idea was that we have commercial uses along Governor's Highway, and you know, as you go to the interior of the site, we have other uses like row houses and senior housing. And again, this framework is really important. As we end this project, and you're going to be like, where do we start? We're always going to remind you, you have to invest in the public infrastructure. These things take a long time to do. But developers want a commitment from the community, regardless of leadership, that the village is going to invest in new roads, in detention, in municipal facilities, in creating this framework, 
where other things can happen. And as you know, there was huge, huge support for creating a village square here with activities for all age groups. And again, uh, you know, uh, this is the three-dimensional model that we built, and it also gives you some near-term implementation ideas. The historic district was the third goal, and protecting your lovely historic heritage was very high on everyone's mind. And we reminded everyone that your Main Street area really hasn't changed much, which is a good thing. It's retained its wonderful scale. There are beautiful old homes. And you guys have already done an, an amazing job of you know, investing heavily in uh, saving a historic heritage with the creamery. So here, this is a bit more policy. So one of the big recommendations is actually to create a historic district as part of your zoning code, which allows you to have facade uh, programs. You can have codes that are a bit more friendly to allow local businesses to kind of survive. So there's a lot of detail in the plan about that. Again, this was extremely well received by the community. Open spaces and natural resources. You guys just completed a full-blown comprehensive plan for the village in terms of parks and the Farmers Park area. So as a parallel effort, what we did was, instead of really focusing on local parks, we focused a little bit more on the regional uh, uh, amenities that you have all, or all around, specifically what the Will County Forest Preserve District owns. So as you go to the next slide, as you can see, not only to the south do, we, do you have the Mooney Reservoir, but to the north you have the entire greenway for the Thornton, Thornton Creek. Thorn Creek. Thorn, Thorn Creek, I'm sorry. And we spoke with the forest preserves. They have some ambitious plans about trails and other things to connect all the way up to through Governor State. And you are really the gatekeepers of that amazing greenway. So they are very delighted with this plan that we are also showing many connections to what's happening. But we feel as you try to attract more residents in the future, Moni can position themselves as, oh, you know what? We are right at the edge or the kind of gateway into this amazing uh, greenway system that the Forest Preserve is investing in. And you can also see here you have quite a lot of creeks. Uh, we do a lot of work all across the region. And some of these creeks are still some of the most pristine creeks. Fork Creek, of course, is one of the big ones. And in the plan, we are trying to make sure that those creekways are also protected. Uh, I'll let Perry talk about the trails. Sure, thank you. So uh, the fifth goal was to create a trail network that served all the neighborhoods, but as well, and as Zareen just mentioned, um, we wanted to make sure we connected to the regional uh, uh, assets that are right around you. This uh, slide here shows um, a little bit of, of the uh, planned bike trails for or bike corridors for Will County and Will County Forest Preserves. There are three main trails that would come uh, through or near Moni, so we wanted to highlight those. Um, but uh, the, the trail framework here is a complete system of, of trails. You see in red the um, Forest Preserve trails shown in green. We do a complete system that connects Moni and Moni residents to the uh, resources that are right around you, as well as uh, to all of the, the village assets. So this is a long-term trail plan. Uh, of course, you won't do all of these at once, but you can start with the trails closer in. And the next slide will show uh, sort of the near-term uh, trail projects that you can do in and around the village that would connect residents to all the neighborhoods and the amenities uh, and destinations within the village. Yeah, one thing to add there, uh, one critical way, we do a lot of trail planning, and the reason these regional trails are important are that it's much easier to get funding for trails that actually go some. So one of the critical trails that we are really pushing on is along Governor's Highway that might connect in the future to the metro station uh, in University Park. So that received great support. We just had Metra review the whole plan, and we hope that you will really push on that and uh, hopefully get some funding for that. Uh, the sixth goal was uh, about making streets safe for all modes of travel for pedestrians, bikes, and cars. So of course you have uh, your um, capital improvement plan for your streets. So f really for this plan, we, we, we um, focused on some of the, the main streets of the Hutter Town, Main Street, Oak Street, Court Street, Egyptian Trail, Governor's Highway, and Moni Manhattan Road to develop a framework of streetscaping and uh, enhanced uh, pedestrian and bike amenities. 
So here you see the framework that we're talking about, the highlighted roads in, in black with landscaping. This created a framework of streetscape that would also include decorative lighting, landscaping, wayfinding, and signage, um, enhanced intersections. You see we've circled the key intersections. Um, and then what would this would also do is, is help kind of develop a cohesive brand and identity for Moni as well and link it to the trail systems. You can see the trails in red here. Um, link everything together uh, to create this uh, cohesive uh, streetscape and framework of streets in the heart of town. Here's an example of um, what we're talking about for Governor's Highway. Here we're including a sidewalk um, on the west side and a, a full a bike trail on the east side, and that's the trail, as we talked about, that would go all the way up to the Metro Station and University Park. We've included some decorative lighting, uh, the 3D uh, model, just to show you how it, could, um, how it could look. The important thing here is that all of this can be done within the existing right-of-way of the roadway. No additional land would be needed on either side of the road to be able to fit all of these things, nor would you have to do any reconfiguration of the roadway itself, so that makes it a much more uh, doable and economical project. It's really all the stuff that's in the green space between the edge of the road and, and um, the, the property line that you own. So very doable. And then uh, to show you just a couple other streets here, this is Main Street. Here we took a little different concept because Main Street's um, a bit of a commercial street in the heart of town. Um, we uh, did wider sidewalks and uh, introduced planters for the planting zone with trees for landscaping that could allow potentially outdoor seating in front of if there are uh, restaurants or ice cream shop or something of that nature. And we carried that same concept into some of the town center streets. So it would be the similar idea. And this is typical for Main Street and town center streets where you want them to be vibrant and have, have places for people to sit and, and spend time and, um, and have uh, attract uh, businesses, restaurants, and small, small coffee shops and that sort of thing. Um, so moving on, uh, we looked at transit. Um, in this case, again, as you all know, since COVID hit, uh, Metro has taken in a huge hit in terms of ridership, uh, understandably, and funding. But you know, as part of a comp plan, we always look at long-term opportunities. So here you see the whole system. And as you all know, uh, PACE right now uh, comes only to the Amazon facility. So as part of the recommendations, we have some recommendations here. But really long-term, as your population builds up, um, you know, the, we, we hope that you can continue to talk to PACE about potentially a stop on this side. But more importantly, River Valley Metro, once COVID is done and they are back in full service, they are running through your town and it's, we think it's really worth the discussion with them that why can't they have a stop here, maybe near the town center as that gets developed. So transit is a bit of a really longer term proposition here, but you have opportunities. Uh, there was, a, I think, a suggestion from one of the trustees about long term, would there be any potential for actual, an actual train station near the town center? So we did talk to Metro about that. It's kind of so long term right now, they barely have any funding to maintain what they have right now. So uh, it's not out of the question, but it's on no uh, long term plans right now. So we do mention that in the document but perhaps 10, 20, 10, 15 years from now that that discussion can continue to happen. There's a very hefty market analysis section in the document. We're not going to go through all of that. Please do take a look. As we Friedman, who was our sub-consultant, they do very detailed look. And we hope as you're trying to attract developers, you can look into, you know, use this document as a way to attract them. The key slides that we wanted to show here were really related to the grocery. That, that was the one thing everyone said, that can we get a grocery here? So here we kind of are showing how you can approach a grocery. Now that you've got the town center, there's a site that you know, everyone agreed that they wanted and you own the land, so they, the land is locked, you've got the right plan in place. But here's the market study. So if you see this slide here, this is saying that right now, money, this is what we call retail leakage. You're leaking this much money by people shopping outside. So there is buying power here, which is a big, big, uh, you know, pl pl positive when, uh, uh, you know, vendors want to come to a market. The second one, it's hard to read here, but I'll just tell you the summary of this. This, they looked at, okay, what about larger grocers like you have Aldi and then other anchors like Panera and Walgreens. So as you can see right now, with the, the numbers that they look at, they always look at are there enough people within a three mile or five mile radius? So you're not quite there yet. 
However, in the next slide, they, look at, they looked at a specific case study like Burkhardt's and other Burkhardt's locations, the buying power within a three minute, three mile distance, I'm sorry, three mile distance as well as the population you do meet. So these are all good numbers to go and approach someone saying, we are very interested in bringing a grocer here. We've got the, mu we've got the buying power, we've got the people, and we've got a site for you. Uh, how, ca how can we move forward? So we hope this really helps you near term as you know we are emerging from COVID. And then, of course, they looked at every use. There's a lot of data on industrial. You've obviously got a healthy industrial market, and now we have, uh, you know, we have the right locations for that as well as there's residential and retail uh, information. There's a very big freight s section there. We're not going to go through any of that, just this one slide, just to remind everyone. So in the end, what the freight transportation plan is recommending is pretty simple. That other than those roads that are shown in purple, trucks cannot go anywhere. So every neighborhood road, as you can see in red, whether you've already designated them or not, this is really important because it's a CMAP plan. This will be coordinated with IDOT, so it basically says that trucks really uh, cannot go into any of the neighborhood streets, and they primarily should stay on uh, Mooney Manhattan and Governor's Highway. So this kind of formalizes that. And then we have an implementation section. We'll just show you, show you a couple of slides. So there's a whole list. Every recommendation we made in the document is listed here. So this is really your guide if you don't ever want to read the whole document again. Here, there, it basically we've uh, layered them as near term and long term. So this is the one thing we would ask all of you to pick a project out of this long list. There's like pages of this and pick one that you really want to champion that you feel passionate about and keep that alive. Whether you are an elected official or a resident, you know, be the champion for a project and just keep it alive and make it happen. We have uh, potential funding sources listed here so that uh, you don't have to go and search for them. Everything from federal, state, and as well as your local funding, TIFs and other things. And then we actually threw in a section here simply because, you know, the next step would be to change your codes and everything, but that might take time and funding. So in the interim, we threw in a whole section for design guidelines. So as you're waiting for all of that, you can at least use this to help people, you know, figure out what, how to do their buildings. So one golden rule we'll ask you not to budge on is not to let put park people put parking in the front, you know, the typical strip retail center. And again, we are primarily talking about the new town center and the historic district. That that one thing, if you start putting parking fields in the front, really completely destroyed, then you can't come back from that. So here we have examples and design guidelines for uh, how to place buildings. You know, the row house product is one, and the senior housing product, uh, two to three stories. This is a product that was very well received by the community that we've really highlighted, and we have some guidelines here for how to do that. Uh, green stuff, green infrastructure, these are all good things. All the street sections that we showed you, if you can tie that to some greening thing, which is actually good, whether it's stormwater management or some other thing, it's always easier to get grants. So we have guidelines for those. And then finally, we have some uh, examples on how to do conservation subdivisions. I mean, it's easy to say, oh, do conservation, but they are actually very few developers do them well. So we have some examples there on how to do that. And uh, that was just a kind of a summary and brief overview of the project. Again, it's been such a delight working with, with you guys. We've done quite a lot of plans in this strange year. And I have to say, um, you know, the kind of community participation we received from your community was outstanding. And CMAP, uh, you know, they are always trying to highlight projects. They were very, very happy with the amount of time you all gave us and how, how comprehensive this plan ended up being. So again, thank you for choosing us and it was a pleasure working with all of you. Thank you. you, you. Thank you. Can I just say that yes. um, having worked with um, the team on the steering committee um, for the year and the public forums and all the interviews, um, it, sometimes it felt like it was never going to end. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our life.
hope you win an award for this plan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I mean, certainly went the extra mile to find out who we were as a village and what we Thank you. Thank it's, you. That makes our, you know, we are very different. We both come from big corporate backgrounds. We started Ginkgo exactly for this because most comprehensive plans are very generic. Right. Most farms don't, can't take the time, right? And, you know, our end products, they don't even look like any of our other plans. This is truly yours. Everything from the font, the color, everything is uniquely done for you. And uh, we feel that's how you distinguish your, yourself, right? If your comp plan looks like your neighbor's comp plan, then why would the developer be interested, right? So we do feel, uh, I would really give kudos to your community also. You, everyone hung in there. No one said, oh, I want to be Naperville, which is very often what we hear. And everyone was very, very clear. They, you have a clear identity and you want to build on that but still be economically healthy. Well, I hope you come back in some stuff. Of course, say the we will. Yeah. We will. We are very much, you know, even in this pandemic, uh, we are, we saw so much, so many of our plans get built. <laughs> we are like, wow, what time? We are very blessed. And just you know, we are right now working with the city of Chicago on their comprehensive plan. So oh, yeah. that has been. Yeah. That'll be meetings that never end. Yeah, that <laughs> literally never ending meetings. <laughs> I have a question. A couple questions. So this is your company. Is that what I heard I'm, you do? I'm the owner, yes. Oh, you are. Oh, well, congratulations. Well, thank you for coming out down here. Uh, usually we don't get the owner of, <laughs> like Aqua never, owner of Aqua never comes here. But, um, so I was the one who referenced the, uh, the, uh, the, the metro station here. So thank you for mentioning that, even though that's, um, like you say, a long-term thing, but I think that's important to be in the plan. Actually, I think the rail line should go all the way south to Kankakee with, but that's a discussion for another day. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, I, I, I wanted you ad to address this because I've seen this a couple places on social media, which is notoriously unreliable, as we know, with, and very loose with the facts, as we all know from quite recent memory. Um, so, uh, the city, se the town center and low income housing is in that plan is there low income housing no no absolutely not and we get this sort of whenever, whenever we see say something like go oh, two, two three story housing people think it's you know the low income housing here just the numbers won't work right it, it's who's going to build it uh, the market isn't there so no that this has nothing to do with on the earth but however the word affordability is completely different. When we say affordable housing, people think it's Section 8 housing, which isn't. It's affordable for you and us, for your children, who maybe want to rent something. So I think that you have to be open to. Suburbs typically have not been open to the rental market for a variety of reasons. Since mm -hmm. the 70s, we've everyone's gotten their share of bad rental, and it has its own taboo. But it's different now. It's like your child if if you think about it or your parents if they wanted to come and live in the suburbs and rent something that they really liked in a nice setting that stock doesn't exist it just isn't there so uh, we are all trying to redefine what affordable housing means it's affordable for all of us right so that's different but here no absolutely not there is no low-income housing here we are trying to say that but it is multi-family you know, for the town center, single family housing, the numbers won't work. Right. But if you, so that's why we're showing the row, the row house product is the one product that has done extremely well through this pandemic, through the last recession. It's two to three stories. It's generally always owner occupied, but it can be rented, but there's always a big management company. It's not like, a, you know, someone comes in and does 300 rental units. It's a very different product and very often local developers. So no, we are, in no way promoting uh, low-income housing here. Thank you. I knew that, but I want that <laughs> for the record, on the record. Yeah. Thank you. And I think what we talked about, too, and I love the row housing, I think, of downtown Park Forest is some of the best around here. Right. And then even on the other side, we have people that come to the town hall. Yes. Which would also, and then affordable senior housing. And I think what we kept trying to say, affordable housing isn't the estate-style style homes that, you know, for a while we were being built everywhere. We don't have room for that anymore, so we want more single-family kind of affordable 
Yeah. Because the town center, to be very upfront, is a chicken and the egg thing, right? You've got a great vision, you've got the land, the market, you know, will recover. What do you do first? What comes first, right? So for a grocer to come, they're like, well, I don't have enough people there, right? So you gotta, do you build the people first? What do you do first? So typically we say, you build a place first. So the right way would be to put in a few streets, create a park, commit to a village hall or something there, even if you don't build it. So there's a commitment and there's an open space that's being used. And then you parcel it out, hopefully you get a grocer, but you have to build the residential population right there, people who can walk to these spaces, to the shops. And the, sh the, sh the final, the actual shops will not come until there's, there are people living there. So that living market, who's going to live there? They're either the seniors, empty nesters, young families wanting to buy or young families wanting to rent. These are market rate, good quality things, but affordable to a different population that doesn't maybe want to buy a home. Yes. Build the dreams, as I always say. Build it and they will come. <laughs> True, it will. I will tell you when you just to give, if this is all feeling daunting, you know, uh, one of our, we, we are 14 years old. One of our first comp plans was for um, town of Munster. And we did win an award for that one. But um, they just went ahead and within five years, a lot of these th things we were like, oh, how are they going to get it done? They found a way, they hit it and just kept going. And now we are old enough as a firm, we are seeing so much stuff. You just keep at it and it'll happen. Just ch keep championing, go for grants. Again, this is a CMAP project. I would really strongly urge immediately and we can help you just lining up grants to see what you can get. If I may, it was something you just mentioning about Munster. So we go to church over there, and my husband, we drove by, and he said, oh, my gosh, it would be nice if those people actually did that. And just to hear you say that, it's like, oh, nice. Yeah. So it looks beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous, yeah. Yeah. So oh, our pleasure. Our pleasure. You are, you are. <laughs> no, you are. It was the right time to do this complaint. Thank you. That's fine. Not to worry. <laughs> Should we stay for the next round or we're done? No, we're good. Are you, is the board going to vote on it tonight? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just don't know when. All right. Okay. I'll make I'll the motion. I'll second. <laughs> Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy and we'll keep in touch. <laughs>